In this video, we're going to cover some of my highlights from this month's Power BI November 2022 update, including things like the new accent colors, the new linked metrics, and the new optimized ribbon in Power BI. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the first thing that I want to cover today is this new color accent, which if you have updated to the latest version of Power BI, you'll notice that a lot of the visuals in Power BI desktop has been changed from the usual yellow color into the teal color. Using this contrast in color against the font that we usually get, which is white, increases the visibility of our labels. And it's especially helpful for people with disabilities. This essentially makes the experience in Power BI a lot easier to use and more inclusive for those that have certain disabilities like color blindness. This changing color doesn't affect the logo of Power BI though, which I thought initially was going to change into a teal color as opposed to the iconic yellow. The next update is to do with the shared axis for small multiples. So small multiples is a visual that allows you to see how the trends of different categories or dimensions change over time across those different categories without having to flick through them using a slicer or a filter. Now, originally, small multiples doesn't allow you to control other slices in terms of their ranges. So it means that if you have a dimension that has not a lot of values or very low values, it makes it difficult to visualize how the trends change over time because the scaling doesn't quite work. So with this month's updates, the Power BI team has added the ability to toggle and enable shared Y axis across your small multiples. Turning off the shared y-axis option will give you a separate y-axis for each of your own small multiples. Whereas if you turn it on, you will only have one y-axis across your uh, different visuals. There's also a new option, the scale to fit option, which allows you to automatically change the scaling of each of your individual small multiples. This new functionality is good at allowing you to see the trends of each of your different small multiples, even if they aren't in the same uh, minimum or maximum values. This means that the Y axis will adjust automatically based on the minimum and maximum data points within each of the small multiples so that you can see the peaks and troughs of your data. There are two new updates with the Azure Maps visual that allows you to have better control over how your maps are visualized. The first thing is the ability to show or hide labels in your Azure Maps. So originally you would not have an option and you would just see the names of different streets or districts within your map. Now, if you toggle these labels off, you will have a much cleaner version of the map if you don't need those labels. In addition to having the ability to turn off data labels on your base maps, you now have the option to customize the category labels themselves. So you're able to change things like their fonts the font colors or even backgrounds. You can now create dynamic slicers using field parameters. Now field parameters is a new feature that was released not so long ago and it's the ability for you to change the measures and dimensions that are being analyzed in your reports. I've had several videos covering field parameters already. If you've used field parameters before, you'll know that while you're able to change dimensions by just using the slicers that it generates, it doesn't allow you to control or create any child slicers, which you can then use to further filter your data. Now in this month, they've removed this limitation. So that means that you can create and parameterize your slicers to create some more dynamic filtering, essentially creating child filters on top of your 
field parameters. So here what they suggest you to do is to create a copy of your slicer and then from your field well you need to select or, or right click on your field well and select show values of selected field. This will change the values that are being shown in your slicer into the next level down, allowing you to create a dynamic filter that is affected by the original field parameter. I haven't got my head fully around this capability yet, so I'm gonna try to cover this in a future video. There's a new optimize ribbon, which is a preview feature, which allows you to pause visuals refresh when you're editing things like measures or editing things in your report. Now for most users with small data sets, this is not really an issue, but this is especially helpful for those using direct query or anyone using large data sets where when you create new DAX measures, your visuals refreshing takes a lot longer. So under the new optimize ribbon, you will have this option to pause all visuals. You have a few options in terms of optimization presets. So different options of what you want to pause, full interactivity or query reduction. And in this optimize ribbon, they move the performance analyzer under it, which makes sense if you think about what it does. This basically means that if you want to look at optimizing your Power BI reports uh, experience, you will just need to look for the new optimized ribbon to do that. Just bear in mind that the optimized ribbon is currently a preview feature. So if you want to use this, make sure you are at the latest version of the Power BI desktop. You can enable this feature under the preview settings. Evaluate and log is a new DAX function that is similar to the print functions in other coding languages. It basically prints the results of a statement that you wrap around it, which you can view by using a SQL profiler or a DAX debug output tool. 2CSV and 2JSON are two new DAX functions that allow you to convert tables into CSV or JSON. You simply feed it the table and it returns that table in either a CSV or JSON style format. An immediate reason to use this is when you're using Power Automate and you might want to export tables from Power BI into files. I'll try to see how I can use this and create an updated version of how you can export uh, tables from Power BI using these functions. You can now upload Power BI files into the Power BI service instead of the usual publish option. You'll notice the upload button available for you in the service. In addition to being able to upload Power BI files, you also have the option to use OneDrive for Business or SharePoint, which if used, creates a live connection to your files, which syncs about every hour. This means that any changes that you make to your files, let's say your Power BI reports, will automatically update to the version in the service. Bear in mind though that this option is not available for those on the free subscription plans and it doesn't work for OneDrive Personal. And it seems that this option will be discontinued in the future. So if you're using these types of sources, you may want to consider using a different way to get data. You can now subscribe reports with filters applied. So this is a great way to send static copies of your reports to your users. You can essentially include the filters that you applied on your reports when you're creating a subscription. So for example, if a user or recipient is only interested in a certain slice of data, you can configure the subscription to use that filter by default so they see their data straight away. If you want to learn more about subscriptions and how you can set it up, I have covered this in a different video, so go check that one out if you haven't yet. You can now show the same metrics across multiple scorecards with the linked metrics feature. This essentially allows you to track the same metric across multiple scorecards if you have multiple, let's say, departments without having to recreate and maintain multiple versions of it. So if you're trying to create a new metric, when you hit new, you will have this new option linked to existing metric, which will allow you to pick and choose which metric you want to get from a scorecard. So when you're viewing an existing metric, you will see all the details pertaining to that linked metric. So any history, owners, and it even shows you which scorecard it originates from and where else it's being linked to. 
Lastly, there's a new update on paginated reports, which has recently become available for pro users and is a good option if you want to create pixel perfect reports. New updates to it, such as an accessible ribbon tab with a number of control options and a contextual tab that appears as objects are selected. You also have options to right click on objects to cut, copy, paste, or delete them, which allows you to make formatted tables more readable. So I'm not too familiar yet with deploying paginated reports in Power BI, but now that it's available for pro users, I will try to cover this in the future. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was in the feature summary, only the ones that were interesting to me. If you want the full list of features, I will leave a link down in the description box below so you can read the full blog post. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.